Hello and welcome to Summit Coyote Outdoors, where we talk about everything outdoor adventure. Today is the start of a series where I'm going to go over every piece of backpacking gear that I own. And it's going to be in parts, so you're, there are going to be uh, videos like today about backpacks, which is the start of backpacking. Uh, we'll do some clothing, we'll do other gear, sleeping pads, sleeping bags, tents, um, gear for uh, your electronics, all kinds of different things. So over the next few weeks, uh, you should start seeing some videos pop out about all the backpacking gear that I own. I'm going to go over uh, not only the stuff, all the stuff that I have because I have it and I can review it and I can show you what I like and dislike about it, but also some suggestions if you're looking for something in that kind of realm. So today we are going to talk about backpacks and we're going to start with the two that I use the most, my two Kelties. Uh, these are the Kelty Coyote 105 and a uh, Kelty Red Cloud. So this Kelty Red Cloud is an older model. It's been, it, I got it when it was used, so it's probably older than I am. I don't know. Um, but, it, uh, but it still works. It's a good backpack. And Kelty, legendary uh, warranty. So, you know, I don't have to worry about these backpacks. They have great build quality and... That's one thing, when you're talking about a backpack like this, it matters how it's made, what it's made of, what the stitching is like, because I've purchased a backpack similar to these, but from like Wish or like, you know, some of those other sites and, you know, an off-brand one from Amazon, and it broke on me on the first time I took it out, and I had to carry that backpack out of Sipsy Wilderness area on my shoulder. Not a good time. If you're going to get a backpack like this, invest in something nice because if you're going to spend money regardless, you might as well spend it on something you really like and it will do the job well and do it for a long time. There are backpacks out there that are way lighter than these, but build quality means something to me. Yeah, these are a little bit heavier, but they are built like tanks. Um, another great brand, and I, I, I rep Kelty because I've used Kelty for a long time, and I'm just not necessarily I like a Kelty simp, but I like their stuff, and I know that it, the quality is going to be there. Um, Osprey is another backpack manufacturer, and in fact, I'm looking at a couple Ospreys for some smaller backpacks, so these are pretty big. Um, some slightly smaller backpacks for some smaller expeditions. And they are known for having some of the most comfortable backpacks ever made. So, you know, go in to a store like an REI or something and try them on. Get them fitted. I highly recommend that you go somewhere, even if you have to travel a little bit, to put one of these on your back. Get it, get it fit. Figure out what works for you. Because if, if a backpack does not fit you right, it will be uncomfortable no matter how good it is. So these are cool. Some of the things you want to look for on a backpack like this are these bottom uh, zipper openings to get into the very bottom of the pack. It's a good place to put like your tent and sleeping bag. Um, things that are a little heavier that you want to center and keep low. Uh, you want to keep them low. You don't want a bunch of weight up here because it'll pull you back. It'll be unstable. So you want that. Um, and you want to be able to get into different areas of the pack. Um, good amount of pockets. Some backpacks can go pocket crazy. You don't necessarily need that. Uh, sometimes less is more. But, um, you know, convenient pockets with good zippers that get into the main compartments. Um, it's always good if you have more than two ways to get into a the main compartment, the center compartment. For instance, on the Coyote... Uh, I can get into it from the bottom, I can get in from the side or the top. So there's a huge zipper on the side here that goes into the main compartment. And uh, that's pretty handy. That is super nice when you're trying to unpack camp or you're trying to pack things back up and you need to shove something in a weird spot just to get it to fit. Um, so 
that's very nice. The other thing you want to see is uh, the quality of the buckles. So you do not want cheap plastic buckles that feel like they're going to break. When you, when you put a buckle together, you want to hear it. You want to hear that snap. And so you'll see that the Coyote actually has slightly smaller buckles, but they're thick. They're, they're pretty tough to, uh, to compress. And then this Red Cloud is an older backpack. It's got some uh, much beefier, larger buckles. It's also heavier, but, you know, they're still, they're still quality buckles either way. And uh, that's just a, a factor of this is a much newer backpack than this. So... Uh, materials have changed and things like that. They've been able to make things lighter and figure out a bunch of different uh, ways to do things better. So these are the two that I use. You can go with a smaller backpack for the most part. Uh, these are pretty big. Like these are, This is a 105. This is, I believe, either a 90 or a 110. I can't remember. But they're both massive backpacks that can carry way more than you probably would need to. However, if you're new, I actually recommend getting a slightly bigger backpack. And the reason is, is you don't have a whole bunch of ultralight small pack gear. So you need kind of a little more space to put normal camping gear. Like for instance, if you don't have a, um, a sleeping pad that folds down to like this, like I have, um, you would need more space to, to deal with that. So you know, these are great options, and uh, I mean, you cannot go wrong with an Osprey or a Kelty. So they're both, they're both great um, brands, and there's a bunch of others out there. Do some, uh, do some digging. There's a ton of um, YouTube channels out there who do very specific gear reviews and can give you a lot more detail than I will on these. But backpacks. Another thing you want to look for, and I'm going to bring this backpack back up, is straps so these they're a little narrow for me and they're a little hard um, they're not very soft that's one of my gripes with this backpack i feel like if i wear it more and just break it in a little better it'll probably be more comfortable um, but good straps on the hips and the shoulders and you want good padding so the padding on the hips on these is, is actually pretty good uh, i could do with some better padding on the shoulders and then you want this um, vents and mesh on the place where it touches your back. So this allows airflow through where you are trying to, uh, where, where you have it touching your back. And that keeps your back from getting nasty and sweaty and uncomfortable. Um, and it keeps you cool as well. So pretty cool. And it's worth noting that you can get those used fairly easily. Backpacking backpacks, uh, they're pretty good in the used market. So, you know, check a look around in some, uh, some different places and you might find a good used one. This, you might notice if you watched my video on motorcycle camping, I use this when rain and water and everything are a problem and I'm not going for a long trip. So this is an Earthpack waterproof backpack. It's 55 liters and it's a roll top style design. This bag is completely waterproof when closed. So you can actually jump in a river, uh, jump in water and float on this if it's got air in it. Uh, you can roll it tight and float. It, it will not leak, um, which is great. And these are durable. They're, they're built well. Um, they've got reflectors on them, things like that. Uh, the only thing about it is it only really has one main pocket in this little, uh, like, small item pocket here. So it's a little bit more tricky to pack. You can't fit as much stuff in it. It's only 55 liters, and it's a single, um, it, it's just a single thing, um, single compartment. So I use this often when I'm kayak camping because, again, if you roll over a kayak, it goes in the water, it needs to be waterproof. All your stuff gets wet and you're, not, you're no longer having a fun time. So the straps on these, pretty cool. Uh, they're a little wider than my Kilty straps, actually, and they have this nice soft uh, like neoprene uh, padding on them. They're not very thick, but they're more comfortable than they ought to be, I think. Um, 
I like them. It's got a chest strap, waist strap, like normal. There's no padding on this waist strap, but for what it is, it, uh, it does the job. There's padding on the back, no venting, but padding. So that's, that's helpful. Um, and it's a waterproof backpack, so that's uh, super handy if you're going to be doing river crossings or you're going to be kayak camping or something like that or you're going to be out and it's, you know it's going to rain every single day. Boom. Waterproof backpack. And I do recommend these Earth Pack ones. They're really nice. I've, I've have several of their waterproof bags uh, in different sizes, and they do really well. They're built well, and uh, they're not that expensive. <clears throat> So, waterproofing, on a side note, you have a few options, and I want to go over one very specific thing, because if you search waterproof bag on Amazon or eBay or any store site, you're going to get these. These are not waterproof, and I really, really hate the fact that they, they will put tags like waterproof on these. They're not waterproof. They're water resistant. They're good for, you know, if it rains for a little bit and you need it to, to, to be protected or, um, you know, whatever. But if, you, if it rains for a long time, it's submerged or it sits in water or it gets wet and it doesn't get dried off, these will eventually leak through. They seep through kind of like a rain jacket, like eventually the fabric and the waterproofing agent on it just gets overwhelmed and it will end up inside the bag. And then it doesn't have a way to escape. <laughs> so with these kinds of bags, one, you wanna use a waterproofing spray on them every once in a while to keep them waterproof, but also don't put anything super valuable in here that you know, if you really can't have it wet, I would recommend something thicker like this, which this is actually a Walmart one. Uh, this isn't one of my earth pack ones, but uh, same concept. You'll notice that they're they're a little bit thicker, and these are completely waterproof. They're the same style thing. You roll them down, and then clip them, and then they're they're waterproof. So waterproof, water resistant. If it if it's claiming to be super lightweight, and you see you see it looks like this, not waterproof bag. However, they're pretty good for. Uh, these are great for bear bags. If you're looking for like food bags to hang up in the tree, these are pretty good. Um, so just a caveat there, and you can get these in a ton of different sizes, both styles. So you can, you can customize it to how you want to pack. I often will use these to pack individual items or types of items like clothing or food, for instance, and I'll color code them. So you come in different colors and I'll get like, oh, the blue one is food. The red one is clothing, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll often pack my sleeping bag and sleeping um, and uh, my clothing in a waterproof bag because, again, if for some reason we get rained on or something like that, I always want that stuff to be waterproof. I don't want to be wearing sopping wet clothes all day. Speaking of waterproofing, there's a couple other options here, and one of them is the good old Ziploc bag. Uh, if you double Ziploc something, you put stuff, whatever you want waterproof in a Ziploc bag, and then you take that Ziploc bag, flip it over upside down, and put it inside of another waterproof uh, Ziploc bag, and zip both of those up, it's pretty waterproof. I'm not going to say if you can hold it underwater for 30 minutes and, you know, it would be the same as one of those roll-top bags, but this is going to keep whatever it is dry under any reasonable circumstance, just about. Um, Ziploc bags super handy to have and you can roll them up and store them and bring a couple extras with you if something gets damaged they don't weigh hardly anything which is nice so you can do that i often will keep fire starters lighters things like that in a ziploc anyway and then sometimes i'll put my cameras my action cams batteries things like that in a couple of ziplocs um, and then the other thing that i have and this is mostly when i go kayak camping but i will bring this backpacking because I film. So I need battery bank power and I keep my battery banks in this uh, Pelican 1060 case. And it's completely waterproof as well. And it's uh, it's just useful. It's a little heavy. It's not ideal if you're trying to shave weight. Um, but 
it does the job and uh, it's off. It's awesome for kayaking. So I often use this kayaking and I will sometimes use it while backpacking. Um, but I've kind of gone to more of the Ziploc thing for my battery banks because y'all are thirsty for content. And unfortunately it's hard to um, bring cameras and things into the woods without battery power to charge them. So that's why I carry that. And last but not least is a day pack. So day packs are small, regular backpacks like this. And there's two different ways you can use this. One, if you're just going on a day hike, yeah, bring a day pack. You don't need to bring that backpack on a day hike. It's silly. It's overdone. And every hiker will look at you like you are nuts. But something like this is great. A couple features you kind of want. Um, I think anyway is you want a um, insulated inside pocket for a hydration bladder. Most backpacks nowadays come with that. Um, some of them to shave weight will will get rid of the insulation. I think it's silly. You might as well have it. Um, I'd use it for other stuff too. This is a pretty general purpose backpack. Um, you want good pocket storage for whatever you're going to carry that day. Day packs don't need to have a ton of storage because you're not really going to be carrying that much stuff on a day hike, hopefully. And then the other thing is, uh, again, with all backpacks, you want the fit to be right. So with this backpack, for instance, I'm actually going to replace it. And the reason I'm replacing it is because the straps that go across, so the chest strap you know, goes in the right place, but the waist strap, which is supposed to go around kind of here, or the hip strap actually is like up here like it's too short this way vertically so uh, it's kind of uncomfortable and I usually just go without it so um, yeah eventually I'm gonna replace this one but it's got pockets everywhere it's got a little zipper pocket on the inside you have plenty of space to store stuff um, and then on top of that you have places for water bottles now here's the thing about that so for these, if you're just using like a, the 16.9 ounce regular water bottles and you're just carrying those on here, that's fine. The, those will work with this. However, if you're like a backpacker and you want to carry a smart water bottle, like the bigger ones, you need a taller mesh thing to hold that water bottle or you just have to resign yourself to holding it maybe in this, uh, this insulated pocket instead, which isn't as convenient. So... Those are, uh, those are options. How I use this backpack oftentimes is I bring it with me in or on strap to one of my bigger backpacks. The reason I do that is because the way I often backpack is I go to a base camp, I set up, and then I day hike out for a few days uh, from that base camp. So then I'll go into one place and then I'll go up this little canyon on this side and I might go out to this prairie on the other side for a, a hike. You know, I might do three days out from the same spot, pack up, and then go to the next spot. So I don't want to carry my big backpack, but I still want to be able to carry some stuff. So I keep a day pack in here that's pretty small, lightweight, easily rolled up, can be shoved inside of another backpack, um, and that kind of thing. So you have, you have plenty of storage for all kinds of things, including um, garbage like these uh, cosmic brownies. Um, uh, snacks are important. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna, I'll cover more of this when I do the food and, uh, and cooking stuff. But, uh, yeah, you can keep snacks, water, um, you know, your map or compass or whatever you want to keep in there if you want to do that. Battery banks, um, you know, an extra set of socks is always really nice. Uh, rain jacket if you think it might rain stuff like that plenty of space in this little backpack you don't need a really big one so that is it on backpacks and storage for backpacking i hope you enjoyed the video and i look forward to making the rest of the content if you liked it give me a thumbs up share the video if you thought it was helpful if you didn't like it hit the useless button i do still look at those and uh I hope you have a wonderful day. Adventure on.